Welcome back to the channel. A good few thousand of you saw my video yesterday about legal tender, but I felt like redoing it because there's a bit that I missed out which would have probably saved a lot of the questions in the comments. The essence of what I said is still the same, so I'll repeat that in this video now. So the term legal tender is often misunderstood and misused. So the broad position is a shop or retail premises, including for fuel and restaurants and things like that, can choose how they accept payment and they do not have to accept. There is no law that says they have to accept any one kind of payment or another. But the caveat is what I'll come back to, which is the bit that I left out in the video. But back on point, there is no law that says a restaurant or a petrol forecourt or wherever must accept, say, a £50 note or a commemorative coin just because it is legal tender. Now, legal tender has a very specific technical term and usage, which is what I'm going to come back to. But aside from this, the shop, the restaurant, wherever it is, can choose how they accept payment. They could say that they don't accept any coins. They could say that they don't accept notes over £20. Pounds. Many places, in fact, do not accept £50 notes because of the risk of fraud and risk of loss to the business. There are lots of arguments about whether something would amount to theft or not, and obviously the argument of whether someone has dishonestly appropriated something is going to be a difficult one if they are offering some kind of payment, just that it isn't accepted by the shop. The situation might be different if they knew the place doesn't accept those coins in the first place, and then they still offer them knowing they won't accept them. There is a question mark over that, but that would be left for a court to decide. But anyway, back to the reason for confusion and the bit that I left out. So legal tender and its specific technical meaning refers to the settlement of a debt. But many people have taken this to mean that if you offer legal tender in a shop or some other place selling you products or services and so on, then they have to take it, which is not actually true. The origin of the confusion comes about because somebody cannot be successfully sued if legal tender is offered in full settlement of that debt. Now, this has raised a raging debate about restaurants and fuel forecourts in particular, in that you've either consumed the food or the petrol is in your car before payment is requested. But once payment is requested at the end of the meal or once the fuel has been pumped, then that amount of money is due. However, it is still to the restaurant and the forecourt to decide whether or not they accept that form of payment. And if they don't accept that form of payment, they can refuse it, but the debt still exists. This does give rise to a bit of an absurdity, which is why so many people have misunderstood it and misapplied these rules in this context. And that is that just because somebody cannot be successfully sued for the the debt owed doesn't mean they still have to accept the form of payment that you are offering. However, this is where the defense of tender before claim comes into play. This is where legal tender is paid into a court before a claim is made so that if somebody does raise a claim against this person for the debt that's outstanding, there is a perfectly valid defense if that money has been paid into court beforehand for settlement of that debt. But this is a specific scenario where there is a form, which is a CFO 100 form, which you use to pay money to pay funds into the court funds account, which would then be a defense of tender before claim. You've tendered the amount of money into the court funds office so that if somebody sues you for that money, the court can pay it out because it's already a defense. There is an application process to release those funds if the defense of tender before claim has been made, and there may be other fees involved as well. So that's the bit that I left out of this video. It is a bit of an absurdity because it does give rise to the situation where you could go to a restaurant, consume the meal, offer to pay in a £50 note, they refuse the £50 note. You haven't necessarily dishonestly appropriated the food because you've made an offer of payment, just that the restaurant doesn't accept £50 notes and they're not obliged to accept £50 notes. So long as you leave your name and address there, it becomes a civil matter, they can sue you for the money. But as I said, if you pay the funds into court, you'll most likely have a valid defence of tender before claim, which means if the restaurant tries to sue you for the money, it won't be successful because they will get the money from the court's fund account. However, this doesn't mean that it's just that amount. There's likely to be other costs and fees involved as well. So of course I wouldn't recommend relying on this as a defense and I don't encourage this practice because it's going to elongate the process. It may incur further costs and ultimately it's just a waste of everybody's time. It's best to check beforehand what form of payment is accepted and make sure you have that ready to tender. No pun intended and thanks for watching.